Another wacky one happened, guys. Big wacky. Wacky enough that, um... Netanyahu had to apologize for it. I don't think I can show video for this. I think I just have to let the audio run. I don't think I can show video of this. Basically, um... The World Central Kitchen, food aid workers, they uh, had a convoy delivering aid in Palestine, and they got airstriked by Israel, like, multiple times, and they're, de like, in, I think they were even moving through a zone that was, that was, like, a safe zone, like, they were moving through an area where they had been explicitly told there should be no conflict. Here's some picture of the attacks, not safe for work. I think I can show this, um, kind of up to YouTube. Yeah, here are the attacks. You, the strikes happened, like, along a convoy that stretched over two kilometers. It wasn't, like, a random attack. They deliberately struck them. This is bad enough that Netanyahu had to, uh, directly answer to it, by the way. Like, th it's- it's- this is, like, distinct from the other 50 trillion times that this has happened. In that, uh, it, you know, they're- they're getting, like, massive condemnation for it. It's- it's, like, so deliberate and so obvious, you know. One was a dual citizen of the U.S. and Canada. Yeah, they were Western citizens as well. Benjamin Netanyahu described the airstrike as unintended and tragic. These things happen in wartime, Netanyahu said, adding that investigation was underway. Officials are checking this thoroughly and will do everything that does not happen again. Israel has routinely obstructed and severely restricted the entry of aid into Gaza, and its forces have opened fire on Palestinians waiting in line for food and other essential supplies. Yep, that's the Flower Massacre. Right, this isn't all the information we need. Here we go. He said Israel was in touch with foreign governments over the episode. The convoy of three vehicles had just left a food, um, a food warehouse. Leaving a warehouse when their convoy, two armored cars and a third vehicle came under fire late Monday, their organization said in a statement. The Israeli military had been informed of the aid workers' movements. The charity said aid workers had just... Yeah, okay, the IDF had literally been informed that the aid workers were moving here. We're talking about targeted strikes on unambiguously, like, uh aid identified vehicles like like they had they had like the paint on top of these cars you know direct targeted strikes extremely marked they knew exactly what they were hitting these weren't random hits or whatever they saw the the these vehicles marked as aid and they fired at them deliberately you know all that bullshit that IDF defenders say where they're like the most moral military in the world and every single strike of the 50 trillion strikes they've made that have killed civilians have had to go through like a team of lawyers and everything? Like, yeah, actually, every single one of the strikes that we fire that just so happens to, you know, randomly strike uh, massive like groups of refugees in areas we've designated as safe or kill journalists in their family homes or whatever, like all of those, like 50 lawyers looked them over. We had them vetted by like an entire team of people. Total bullshit, obviously. Um... They do whatever they want. Chances are this was the IDF being trigger happy. Well, yeah, of course. They want to kill Palestinians, so they don't want Palestinians getting aid. From Mossad commentary, the IDF is investigating an incident in which five foreign air workers were killed by Gaza, which appears to be a side bomb planted by Hamas. All right. From Mossad commentary, right? This current strike came out literally a day after Haaretz revealed that Israel set up kill zones specifically to target civilians. Yeah, we didn't even talk about that last stream. From Haaretz. Israel created kill zones, and anyone who crosses into them is shot. The Israel army says 9,000 terrorists have been killed since the Gaza war began. Defense officials and soldiers, however, tell Haaretz that these are often civilians whose only crime was to cross an invisible line drawn by the IDF. Convoy was hit multiple times. The World Central Kitchen logo could be seen on items inside the charred interiors of the northernmost and southernmost cars. The car in the middle was left with a gaping hole in the roof, which was clearly marked with the group's logo. All three vehicles, though far apart from one another, were on or near the Al Rashid coastal road. Look at the pics of the food trucks. They're insane. Yeah, we see. Looks like drones to me, but what do I know? Anyway, most of these guys are Western citizens, too, which uh, sort of heightens the... Um, the egregiousness in the eyes of our media, because, you know, Western media has kind of, like, agreed that Palestinians aren't really humans, uh, but Westerners are. At least 196 aid workers were killed in Gaza and the West Bank between October 2023 and late March, said uh, Jamie McGoldrick, a senior UN relief official. This is not an isolated incident. There is no safe place left in Gaza. And this was bad enough that Netanyahu had to actually come out and take uh, responsibility for it, you know? Like, that is, that is pretty uncommon. That's enough of an optics blow that even he feels the need to uh, address it.
The world's central kitchen is pausing its Gaza operations after seven of its workers were killed in an airstrike, leaving even fewer options for Palestinians on the brink of famine. They had just finished unloading 100 tons of food at a warehouse in central Gaza when the group says their cars were hit by an Israeli strike. Nothing I can do. Here's what the Israeli Prime Minister had to say. Wait. Unfortunately, in Jesus. the last day, there was a tragic incident where our forces unintentionally struck innocent people in the Gaza Strip. It happens in war, and we are thoroughly investigating it. We are in contact with the governments, and we'll do everything Man, to I don't, I don't want to do, like, an expression policing or whatever, but it sure does look like he's smirking. <laughs> God damn. It sure, he, he sure isn't contorting his face in a way to make me think he isn't. Appearances in the future. Well, World Central Kitchen has been feeding starving residents of Gaza since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. CNN's Melissa Bell is in Jerusalem. Uh, uh, Melissa, we devastating news uh, for World Central Kitchen aid workers. What more do we know about the strike and, importantly, also the messaging from Israel right now? Um, what we've heard is that they were in touch with the IDF. They knew the route, um, but clearly something went wrong and right now we just don't know what. Uh, that's right. In fact, we've just been hearing... Uh, I mean, this isn't something going wrong. This is just a continuation of their behavior this entire time, you know? Like, the, literally the only reason we're even hearing about this is because they're foreigners. They're not Palestinians. There have been so many instances of... Pal like, how, how many Palestinian journalists just got murked in their family homes near the beginning of the invasion of the Gaza Strip? Like, again, the only reason there's been any, like, uh, plausible deniability is because they've been killing off the people who could report on it, and the people reporting on it, in a lot of cases, have been Arab. Uh, it, it's 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 really 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 straightforward. From the IDF, Eleni is saying that its top general is personally going to review uh, the information as it comes in as part oh, of what's been great. described to us as the high level probe. Uh, that is being launched to try and figure out what went on. As you say, according to World Central Kitchen, this was a convoy in a deconflicted part of Gaza. It had been yeah, yeah, yeah. The beach was literally marked as. Um, and keep in mind, they're driving on an open beach. They're not like they're not like navigating an urban jungle of broken down concrete and ruins where it's difficult to get a clear look at anyone. Open driving on the beach. Modern drones have cameras. There's literally no mistaking what they are. It's like it's it's so it's it it could not possibly be more blatant, you know? Been delivering a hundred tons of aid uh, to a warehouse. The convoy was then leaving uh, when it was hit. And when you look at those pictures of the aftermath uh, of the strike, you can see uh, on the armored at armored car uh, the World Central Kitchen logo clearly uh, exposed. So uh, that will now be the subject of an investigation by the IDF. But oh, of course, by the yeah, the by the IDF. You know, mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to can't wait to can't wait to hear a report from an IDF spokesman in in English, like at purely in English, to an English audience saying, like, actually, yes. Uh, if you review this uh, grainy camera footage taken from the night before, they actually had fifty Hamas fighters in each truck, and then the USA will, like, I don't know, condemn the the kitchen uh, aid group or whatever. Yeah fact that the World Central Kitchen that has played, as you say, such a crucial role in getting aid uh, to uh, the uh, hungry in Gaza. And let us bear in mind that it is 2.2 million people, according uh, to the UN, uh, that are uh, at danger of hunger and half of the population of Gaza that is now facing. I mean, they got what they wanted, though. The aid has been cut off, you know, Anthony Blinken, Abe Lincoln. In Ukraine. I spoke to Jose Andres just about uh, a week ago about the efforts. This is like drone striking ambulance. They've done that too. That uh, World Central Kitchen's engaged in in, uh, in Gaza, as it is in many other conflict zones the, around the world, including in Ukraine. Uh, they have been doing extraordinary, brave work, day in, day out, and critical work to try to make sure that people in need get what they need, starting with the most basic thing of all, food to survive. The victims of yesterday's strike join a record number of humanitarian workers who have been killed in this particular conflict. These people are heroes. They run into the fire, not away from it. Killed in this conflict, you know? Yeah, by who?
They died. A record number of aid workers have died of heart attacks, pulmonary embolisms, tripped on their shoelaces, you know. It's a remarkable tragedy. They show the best of what humanity has to offer when the going really gets tough. They have to be protected. We shouldn't have a situation where people who are simply trying to help their fellow human beings are themselves at grave risk. Even Haaretz is reporting on this, calling out the IDF. Basically, the IDF claims that Haaretz is saying are not the case is that there was an armed man in one of the trucks. But if you allow that to be, even if that was true, and Haaretz is saying it isn't, even if you allow that to be the case, you, oh, there's an armed man in one truck, I will drone strike three aid vehicles. Like, you, even if that was the case, like, the, 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 level of necessary justification for slaughtering people has dropped to such an incredible level that it's like like it's it's we have fallen below like the most basic level of like you have to prove the need to kill these civilians you know every aid vehicle every building they've always done this remember we did our PCRF stream after um Israel just randomly missile targeted like a bunch of buildings including um uh, the, the Reuters headquarters in uh, in the Gaza Strip. They were like, oh yeah, there's Hamas there, whatever. Like, they've always done this. It's it just like, oh, yep, yeah, terrorists. There's a reason why the like, um, there's a reason why the like, oh yeah, Palestinian, uh, Hamas hides in the skull of Palestinian children. You know, there's a reason that joke is, is, is so widespread and it's because they keep doing it. Like nonstop. The IDF's early explanation read the killing of the World Central Kitchen team is in poor security services. The drone bombed the convoy three times in succession because teams survived one hit and tried taking cover at another vehicle, and the survivors moved to a third, were finished off there. Deliberate. So, is this true? Is this confirmed? That the reason three vehicles were struck was because, like, survivors were fleeing to other ones and they kept firing at the survivors afterwards? Because I've heard that multiple times, but I haven't seen it reported in, like, read the Haaretz thread. Reading. According to event source, the cars were clearly marked as belonging to the org, but the war room of the unit responsible for securing the route identified an armed man in the truck and suspected that he was a terrorist, sources say. The truck reached the warehouse with the World Central Kitchen's three cars, with seven volunteers in them. A few minutes later, the three cars left the warehouse without the truck on which the ostensibly armed man was located. According to defense sources, that armed man did not leave the warehouse. At some point when the convoy was driving along the approved route, the war room of the unit responsible for security of the route ordered the drone's operators to attack one of the cars with a missile. Some of the passengers were seen leaving the car after it was hit and switching to one of the other two. They continued to drive and even notified the people responsible that they were attacked. But seconds later, another missile hit the car. They were So they were warning the IDF. They were telling the IDF, like, as they were getting shot at, that they were being shot at by the drone. And they saw people fleeing from the car and could clearly identify person by person, like, who was moving, and they still fired at it. Like, their their excuse was there was some shadowy armed man somewhere, vaguely, possibly, maybe, from the warehouse, but they didn't see him moving in between the cars, and they just kept firing. The third car in the convoy approached, and the passengers began to transfer to it the wounded who had survived the second strike in order to get them out of danger, but then a third missile struck them. It's frustrating, one of the defense sources told Haaretz. We're trying our hardest to accurately hit terrorists and utilizing every threat of intelligence. And in the end, the units in the field decide to launch attacks without any preparation in cases they have nothing to do with protecting our forces. How many times have you heard Israel defenders say that, like, every strike is pre-approved by 500,000 lawyers, the entire legal team of the world, like, unites in, in approving every single thing the IDF does? And then, whoa, fascist militaries that are hopped up on ethno-nationalist propaganda actually just do whatever they want constantly, and that's been the case? Every single time groups like this do, like literally every time, Serbians, Russians, Israelis, literally every single time this happens, it turns out that the propaganda hyped up like soldiers on the field just do shit, whatever they want, you know, with very, very, very little discipline. Remarkable. Who could have thought that things would be exactly the way they always have been in that regard, you know? Uh, we've spoken directly to the Israeli government. And hey, you know, again, that is a source that is reporting to Haaretz, you know, an Israeli journal, uh, 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 you know, um, newspaper. About this particular incident, we've urged a swift, a thorough, an impartial investigation. Is Haaretz Hamas? Yes. 
to understand exactly what happened. And as we have throughout this conflict, we've impressed upon the Israelis the absolute imperative of doing more to protect innocent civilian lives, be they Palestinian children, women, and men, or be they aid workers, uh, as well as to get more humanitarian assistance to more people more effectively. Great. Very strong language. Canada, Australia, United Kingdom call for investigation. This has made a lot of people very mad. Remember, I've said this before, like Israel gets away with a lot of shit because they're the U.S.'s pet military project and proxy in the Middle East, and we use them as a wedge against Iran. But their their leeway isn't unlimited. And just like randomly slaughtering Western aid workers in an area that's meant to be free of conflict, like there there are limits, you know? Yeah, the people killed her from like six different countries. Yeah, they, they, what, what they did actually was like the ultimate martyrdom. They went out there knowing that Israel was going to strike them because they knew that through their like Captain Planet-esque multinational heritage, they would unite the Western world in getting angry about this one. Israelis celebrating the killing of aid workers? Is this from Telegram? Oh yeah, it, guys, the, the, it's exactly like Russia. Russia and Israel are both united in the practice of having all of their worst citizens on Telegram celebrating like every gruesome, gory, dead uh, foreigner. Yeah, absolute psychopaths. A bunch of like crying, laughing emojis. Say good morning to the whore Polish guy too, who will now be senior partner of its ancestors, the soldiers of Adolf Hitler. This Australian whore will no longer get to jump with the kangaroos. It's, it's about as vile as you would expect. And probably also a little ineptly translated, but Telegram is full of these people. At this point, Israel is worse than Russia? Uh, pound for pound, probably? Can you imagine an Israel with the size and power of Russia? Jesus Christ. Like, pound for pound, probably, yeah. Russia has also been humbled by losing the Cold War and being ostracized by the global community, whereas Israel is being empowered by the West constantly playing defense for them. Justin Trudeau said the attack on aid workers is absolutely unacceptable. This is something that never should have happened. We are heartbroken for the families, for the organization, putting people in harm's way to counter the extraordinarily devastating humanitarian crisis going on in Gaza right now. We obviously need full accountability and investigation in this. A ship, ships carrying 240 tons of aid to Gaza turned back to Cyprus because of this attack. Really? Aid group halts food delivery in Gaza after Israeli strike kills seven workers. Then yeah, it looks like they're getting what they wanted, you know? If, uh, if the IDF, like, kills aid workers with this kind of, like, consistency and regularity, then yeah, you can't, you just, you can't have aid workers. They're blocking aid moving into the Gaza Strip, you know? Or, or, or it's either the Israeli government or it's, you know, regular civilian Israeli protesters who suddenly, like, for some reason all have the time and money and all have, like, identical tents, you know, that were given to them by someone else. Yeah, I'm sure. Totally, like, grassroots organization there. And you kill the aid workers trying to move in. Turn back from Gaza, according to Cyprus. The temporarily, the temporary port has been canceled. I, I don't know what the timeline was ever going to be for the port that um, Biden talked about constructing during the State of the Union address. I don't know what the timeline for that ever was. The port hasn't been canceled. That's fake news. No, no, no. It hasn't. Been, it, we would know if it had been canceled. I just don't know what the timeline is meant to be on that. The killings threatened to bring repercussions on multiple levels. The dead were citizens of some of Israel's closest allies, which could antagonize them at a time when the country has few friends amid mounting international criticism of its nearly six-month uh, offensive in um in uh, in Gaza. Would it be impossible to have UN soldiers protecting aid ports of entry? Yeah, sure. You go there. You 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 convince them. You know, sixty days to build the port, and we'll see how it goes. Absolutely wretched. John Kirby says there's no evidence Israel deliberately struck. Your question presumes at this very early hour that it was a deliberate strike, that they knew exactly what they were hitting, that they were hitting aid workers and did it on purpose. And there's no evidence of that. You know, with, um, with the administration this committed to defending Israel, it's pretty remarkable that they managed to fuck up their PR anyway. Like, they literally have the, the, the most like hegemonic like state and and corporate media coalition defending them in, in human history you know the west america and somehow still israel falls below these expectations can you imagine how much israel would be able to get away with if they adhered to like an american level standard of um of discipline and engagement when it came to like uh uh uh, you know, firing at civilians or whatever else. Like, not to say American soldiers are perfect, but they're about 17,000 levels better than the IDF. So, like, they could get away with this forever, like, indefinitely, you know? Um, but that's how fascism is. I would also remind you, sir, that we continue to look at incidents as they occur. 
The State Department has a process in place. Collar gap. Date, as you and I are Huge collar gap. Speaking, they have not found any incidents where the Israelis have violated international humanitarian law. And lest you think we don't take it seriously, I can assure you that we do. We look at this in real time. They have never violated international humanitarian law ever in the past five to six months. I'm telling you, the State Department has looked at incidents in the past and has yet to determine that any of those incidents violate international humanitarian law. Uh, so it, notice, notice how it went from they haven't violated international humanitarian law to the U.S. State Department has not made the claim that they have violated international humanitarian law. Fascinating. <laughs> Man, you know, it's, uh, you, you gotta feel sympathy for the, uh, for the State Department officials, you know? They all know they're selling bullshit. Like, they always are, don't get me wrong, the State Department lies all the time, but this is a particularly egregious and difficult to defend, uh, you know, pile of nonsense they have to uh, sell to people. One must be desold to do such things. Well, Kirby's been desold for a while. Could a reporter just flat out say you're lying to him? Well, sure. It's not illegal. Hmm. Okay, this this article also mentions the um the 250 tons of aid moving back from Cyprus. Or 400 tons, according to this. Just to give an example, during the end of Obama's term, the rule of engagement in Afghanistan was that no buildings were allowed to be hit with airstrikes at all because when soldiers called in air support because of risk of civilian casualties. Yeah, it's it really is. It's, you know, if it weren't for America being the ent entity that's sort of propping up Israel's behavior here, it really would be like a, a, a pretty solid reminder of how responsible we are in comparison, at least, or to, to how much worse it could be, you know? Um, even during the height of Obama's drone war, we didn't even come remotely close. Not even, re like, it's, it's, it's universes apart, you know? Israel's behavior is more at home in, like, 1960s Africa or, or, or Southeast Asia, you know? Like, Israel's behavior is more in line with the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. It's like a completely different era with regards to, like, the callous disregard for civilian casualty. Uh, you know, in an era before smartphones, when, when, when TV was barely covering this shit, you know? But instead, we're just getting, like, minute-by-minute minute updates of every horrible thing they do. Meanwhile, Kirby and everyone else has to go out there and pretend that we're still living in the 60s, that, you know, you're only getting your information days or weeks afterwards from the news, and that it's already been sanitized. So there's this, like, weird contrast between the horrible shit you're seeing day in and day out being covered by news organizations, not even just by, like, random TikTokers, and then you have to hear the State Department go like, oh, you know, it's, uh, uh they, were, they, they were doing their best to minimize the civilian casualties. More Kirby nonsense. More color gap. So how can the U.S. continue to send aid to Israel without any conditions? Yes, they have a right we're to... We're not sending aid to Israel. We're sending aid into Gaza, uh, and that's... Weapons. How can they, how can the U.S. can... We're not sending aid to Israel? Like, none at all? Okay you to send military oh, military aid assistance Israel without any conditions is there no red line that no, we, to you know we've had this we've had this discussion you and me quite a bit from up here um they're still under a viable threat of hamas you know we're all, we're always talking about this genocide 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 you're always bringing this up i don't i don't what's your deal man um we're still going to make sure that they can defend themselves and the 7th of October doesn't happen again. That doesn't mean that... The 7th of October will happen again the day we stop supporting Israel militarily, you know? They have nukes, they have a massive military, top-of-the-line high-tech military equipment rivaling any modern nation. Uh, meanwhile, uh, they're occupying their time and spending that money, you know, drone striking aid vehicles and uh, firing missiles into Rafah. But, uh, yeah, no, we need to keep giving them billions and billions of dollars of weapons. It's, what, what else are we supposed to do? Not do that? It's a free pass that, that, we, that we look the other way when something like this happens, or that we aren't and haven't since the beginning of the conflict urged the Israelis to be more precise, to be more careful, uh, and quite frankly, to uh, increase the, num the, the amount of humanitarian assistance that gets in. Um, uh, you know... We, I haven't been asked about it yet, but I expect that I would be. You know, there was a discussion just yesterday with our Israeli counterparts about Rafah. Now, this one was done virtually. We expect it'll be an in-person meeting here. And, uh... Remember remember when we read that article where Netanyahu was apparently screening Biden's calls for weeks because um, Biden kept saying, hey, don't do the offensive in the South, you know, a two-state solution, blah, blah. And Netanyahu just didn't listen and stopped picking up the phone in a week's time or so. Uh, but the whole reason to have that meeting 
was to talk about our concerns over a major ground operation in Rafah and to present viable alternatives for them to be... Okay, did they listen? Because right, right now, uh, the U.S. State Department, State Department of the most powerful nation in the history of the world, is saying, no, 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 we talked to them. Okay. Be more precise and more targeted. So the idea that we're, uh, we're, we're some plastic graveyard here, and we're not paying attention to, uh, to the civilian casualties or the civilian suffering is just not true. Right, but these are verbal urgings. You, you're, you're waffling, sir. You're, sir, you're, 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 you're yammering. You're yip yapping. What are you doing? You know, because you uh, because the 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 billions in aid that you give to Israel, that's something you're doing. You're you're doing that. You're not yapping that. You're doing that. So what are you doing about all the other stuff? Verbal commitments. There's no other incentive besides. I, the I, I know you want us to you want us to hang some sort of condition over their neck. And what I'm telling you is that we. That's right. Setting any condition for billions in military aid, that's hanging them by the neck. That's like, that's like, that's such an unreasonable thing to even suggest, you know? Oh, you wanna have any condition on humanitarian behavior before we give weapons to someone? Like, the implication of this would be that you could fairly give weapons to, uh, to Nazi Germany because like any impositions whatsoever on their, um, on their behavior would be like a condition you're hanging them over the, like, what are you talking about? Is it really, truly, are we bragging about it being unconditional? We continue to, to talk. How, like, how can international rules-based order continue to exist when America is boasting that there are no moral preconditions to its support? I was under the impression that we had, in, in the past at least, made an effort to at least pretend that we were enforcing some kind of law or morality-based international rule, that our support for countries, our willingness to trade with them or whatever else, like there was some kind, because we say we don't do diplomacy with, with, with the bad guys, axis of evil, whatever the fuck, right? Like there's always been at least the pretend, you know, the to pretense. To work with the Israelis to make sure that they are as precise as, keep, as they can be and that more aid's getting in and, and we're going to continue to take that. Approach. Yeah, yammering. We're, t we're talking to the Israelis, you know, but the, the aid we're giving them, that's something we're doing. That's different. Again, like, international rules-based order is pretty much done, you know? The invasion of Ukraine reminded the world that in spite of everything that's happened since the end of the Cold War, you can still make just old-style land grabs. And what's happening right now in Israel is a reminder that America isn't even pretending to uphold any kind of international rule. It's just might makes right. From a moral perspective, China should just take Taiwan. I don't think they should, it'd be morally bad, but that's what America has said. America has said, yeah, you know, there is no law, there is no morality. Uh, we will not set preconditions because our aid is entirely like real politic based, you know? Our support for Israel has nothing to do with even like the pretense of them being the most moral army in the Middle East or a democracy or whatever else. It's entirely because it serves our interest. Well, it serves China's interest to take Taiwan, doesn't it? So there you go, you know? We have no moral high ground, you know? Um, it, it, everything that we've signed off on here, and that's what we're doing, we're signing off on it, you know? We're not powerless onlookers to Israel's excesses and in, in, in war crimes or whatever else, you know? We're, we're, we're active participants in them by defending them. Would we even do anything if they bombed America? Why would they bomb American troops? What American troops? I don't think you're right here. I think this is way more complex than us just making them stop. No, th this is one of those like obfuscation things. Obviously, the way in which you would make Israel stop or whatever, like the complexities of that, it would be difficult, complicated, nuanced. It wouldn't be like a binary yes, no thing. It would take a lot of effort, but it's still doable. Right now, we're doing the exact opposite of that. Like, I'm not saying that there's like a button that Biden can press to stop Israel immediately, but I don't like to pretend that America isn't like gleefully enabling this shit right now by with, with what we just heard. Jack, Kirby being up there being like, well, we have no evidence they knew what they were targeting. It was three consecutive targeted strikes and clearly identified aid vehicles. There's no question whatsoever they knew what they were doing, you know, from they've not violated international, you know, law to the State Department hasn't claimed they have. Just like, they know what they're doing. Like, this is, we're, we're, we're gleefully defending them. They, you know, we, we know what we're doing. This sets the stage for the next 50 years in international politics. I know that a lot of you lefties, you crazy communists, you know, you haven't believed in America. American empire for a long time. And that's fine. You know, that's fine. But a lot of people have. 
America projects a lot of stability around the world, even in areas where it's not necessarily justified. It projects the image of stability, you know? America is a very powerful nation. We stabilize nations, uh, not through exploitative trade deals or, you know, neocolonialism with our businesses getting better deals because they offer cheap labor and blah, blah. But we stabilize in the sense that, like, generally speaking, the global market doesn't like war. A lot of lefties mistakenly believe that war is profitable. Generally not true. Sometimes, in rare instances, yes. Usually if you're fighting over, like, in a very primitive accumulation sense, like you're literally fighting over territory, right? Or or maybe you're fighting to, like, uphold a regime that allows you to do this or that. But, like, it's like the same uh, thing people say about the Iraq War. Like, our participation in the Iraq War didn't, like, open up the wellsprings of American like petrodollar wealth like it, it didn't it didn't like enrich america oil that wasn't why we were there if you compare the amount we spent on the iraq war to any conceivable economic benefit of establishing like uh you know um um uh, uh, a government in our name uh you know a new iraqi government we lost out on that big time monetarily obviously a lot of uh you know uh, a lot of corporations that had ties to Dick Cheney or whatever got a bunch of, like, no-bid contracts, so money was moved around, but overall, it's not about the money for the most part. There are other considerations. War is bad. Really. So the fact that our global economic order relies for the most part on stability, you know, neo-colonialism more so than like traditional colonialism, that is a stabilizing force. It's not great. It's not moral. It's not being done for good reasons. It's being done for money, but it is nonetheless a stabilizing force. So what does that mean with regards to like Israel, you know, because this seems like a complete rejection of that perceived stability. Not anymore, right? It seems like, if anything, things are going the opposite way. Countries are leaning more towards protectionism, both in name and in deed. Uh, Russia certainly is, and they're somehow, you know, they're surviving in large part because of their abundant natural resources. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it, it seems like we're leaning back from that, opening ourselves up to more conflict in the future. Compare this to how the U.S. treats Ukraine. Blinken is now openly bitching that Ukraine is blowing up oil refineries in Russia. Right after a strike on uh, the Iranian consulate. I think to Biden, Israel can do no wrong. I don't really think it's about whether or not Israel can do no wrong necessarily. I just think that America has dug a hole both culturally and militarily with regards to A, the weaponization of anti-Semitism in name only. American government packed with Nazis. The GOP packed with Nazis, and yet they can still use anti-Semitism as, as an attack on others, you know? Do they care? No, of course they don't. Every MAGA GOP member is aware of the fact that they bump shoulders with Nazis and white nationalists all the time. They know what they're doing when they say Soros this and Soros that, but they weaponize anti-Semitism to further, funnily, anti-Semitic aims, you know? Um... So in a cultural sense, we've overinvested and over like broadened that 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 claim, that attack, uh, you know, and, and at the same time, it seems that like the American uh, response to Iran has been reduced to, well, I hope Israel just keeps killing their nuclear scientists. You know, that's like our big strategy moving forward. Like, what else do we have? Seriously, what else? What else do we have? I, like, does anyone can somebody explain to me what? the American response to the Iranian nuclear weapons program is, given the fact that Iran will have nuclear weapons within a relatively short length of time. I can't predict the future, certainly within a decade, unless something goes wrong. Those nuclear facilities are deep underground in mountain ranges. You know, they're not going to be struck by, by drones and, and, and destroyed, you know? So what's America's response to this? Israel didn't even tell the U.S. they were going to hit the Iranian consulate. Ridiculous. Israel notified the Biden administration a few minutes before its Air Force conducted the strike but didn't ask for a U.S. green light. At what point do you just, like, SEAL Team 6 them? Jesus f***ing Christ. And a huge amount of this, literally a huge amount of this, is just because of the, the Iran. That's it. Iran is a more rational agent than Israel. Yep. We should, never should have leased the, leashed the CIA. 1960 CIA would have taken care of Israel by now. Yeah, they would have smeared so much LSD on door handles uh, in, in Netanyahu's residence, you know. Really would have put an end to this.